Sean from AD here. Today we're going to be reviewing a nitrous data log. You bought a uh, nitrous kit, plate, direct, whatever. You got a nitrous tune specific from it for it from your tuner. You install everything, and now it's time to data log to verify that everything is working correctly. In front of me, I have a nitrous log from a 14 automatic. This customer is running race gas and has a direct port. But there are a couple of issues in here that are consistent with most nitrous setups, and we're going to be going over that. First and foremost, this is wide open throttle. We have the throttle trace here, and in purple is RPM. I want to graph NOx sensor and make sure that we have good enough fuel quality, first and foremost. This customer happens to be running race gas, and we are seeing that the NOx sensors are adding everything it can. This is perfect. No fueling issues here. Next thing we're going to look at is we have a little hiccup in the RPMs here. This is consistent. <clears throat> if we had throttle or if we had uh, mile per hour, we could see if this was uh, spinning the tires. In fact, I know that this is actually a lean misfire. There's a massive lean condition right here. And we have measured air fuel. We go over here and it's dead lean. When you have a misfire event, you will re lean on the O2s and the, and the uh, ECU will correct. Um, in this case, we actually trailed lean before that and it just went dead lean when it had a misfire event. Um, <clears throat> what we have here is inherent with nitrous systems in general due to the fact that bottle pressure versus fuel pressure is roughly 20 to one. Fuel pressure is gonna be 50, 55 PSI at the rail and bottle pressure is gonna be 950 to 1000 PSI. Nitrous also atomizes or vaporizes at the jet and speeds up. It takes energy out of the air, which cools everything off and it's great. It also cleans things, but it, it speeds up as it vaporizes. Um, the same thing would happen with fuel, but at a much lower to a much lower degree and fuel actually will not vaporize in an intake manifold normally. It will wait until it hits a hot valve. So what we have here is nitrous reaching the cylinders first. Um, Two ways to control it, you can coil up nitrous line between the solenoid and the jet. A couple feet will normally do the trick, uh, or you can buy a delay box and just delay the nitrous solenoid itself to allow the fuel more time to get to the cylinders. Um, <clears throat> if you were to do a delay box, we can simply uh, look at the data log. We're going to start at this point and we're going to pull all the way over here. It looks like we would set the delay at about one quarter second. We'd start at one quarter second a delay on the nitrous solenoid and we would data log again and, and see how things, how things looked. And because we have an excellent resolution in this live link data log, customer is a brand new vehicle, uh, data logged it correctly. He's hitting nitrous after he's already gone wide open throttle. And this is using a live link gen two with an SCTX four, which gives us better resolution in general than what we get from a lot of X3s, so we can see some good data. So the lean spike, 100% normal. Most of the time, people just uh, ignored it, didn't realize it was there. These, these ECUs are so sophisticated and, and respond so quickly, and with the logging software that we have today, we can actually see things as they happen. So delay box, or cold up nitrous line, whichever you want to do. Next, we're going to look at uh, the fueling. We need to see what's going on with fueling on this vehicle. In the middle of this second gear pull, we can see that um, we're running richer on bank one than we are bank two by a little bit. We actually are pulling more fuel on bank one than we are on bank two. Pulling fuel, anything under, as we went over in, in previous uh, videos, anything under 1.0 on the fuel trims is the ECU pulling fuel. Anything over 1.0 is the ECU adding fuel. So we see <clears throat> we're pulling fuel here, but only on one bank. That's a big question. The reason. Uh, the question is why? Why are we getting more fuel on bank one or are we getting more nitrous on bank two? This happens to be a direct port with uh, two fuel solenoids and two nitrous solenoids, one for each bank. There's likely something going on. We have a restriction in the lines, uh, trash in the jets, trash in the solenoid, or a solenoid is not functioning correctly and uh, the customer needs to investigate, disassemble, clean, inspect, um, and then re-log. So you're, we do see this with plate kits as well. The uneven distribution of fuel and nitrous with a plate kit is quite normal. There's no real way to 
accurately distribute evenly to all eight cylinders. It's why we prefer direct ports. This one happens to be a direct port and we are seeing a bank to bank variance. Because we have excellent logging, the customer can go in there, view this, and then start looking and seeing what's going on with his kit. This is not a, a, a tune related. Both banks are targeting the same fueling. Um, <clears throat> in general, if we were to look at this, and let's ignore bank two, let's just say that your entire engine is, is running pretty rich. It's pulling 16.5% uh, here, and we're still rich by 3.5%. Um, what to do? Well, if you're off that much, the easiest thing to do is to reduce your fuel jet or increase your nitrous jet. If you are not seeing any knock activity, in this case negative, yeah, you can increase the nitrous jet without issue. So you'd increase the nitrous jet a little bit if you're running 15, 20% rich. If you're only running 5, 10% rich, probably better idea to increase your bottle pressure. If you're running lean by 5, 10%, reduce your bottle pressure. Otherwise, if it's more than 10%, start changing the jetting around to get it more in line. Ideally, we want to be within 5% of, of uh, what we have programmed. This tune on motor, if, if you were to data log this tune on motor without the nitrous, it would be within about 2 to 3%. We want to keep it as close to that as possible. So you do want to adjust your nitrous jets, bottle pressure, uh, based on the fueling, and at the same time, make sure your bank to bank is correct. If, you, if you're seeing variances bank to bank, you do have an issue. In this case, it's going to be easy for the customer to go through since he has multiple solenoids and they're controlled by different banks. Uh, the nitrous comes in on two solenoids, one for each bank, same with the fueling. If you had a plate kit, we do see this as well. Um, it's far more difficult to distribute the fuel and nitrous evenly to all eight. Uh, if you're seeing a bank to bank variance of 15 plus percent with a plate kit, you may have some trash in the plate itself. Uh, you could have some puddling issues of fueling in the manifold. We do see that with larger shots and E85. Uh, it's generally better when you're running larger shots, in my opinion, to run a proper kit. If you want to run 100 shot with a plate kit, Sure, no problem. Make sure your fuel is good quality, knock sensors are adding, and then read your fuel trims and adjust bottle pressure and jetting appropriately. Okay, thank you very much.